we're going to work with some random vectors in this example and do some computations. The random vectors that we're going to work with are xi for i equal 1 to n. So there's a collection of n different random vectors. And one thing that we know about these random vectors is that they are mutually uncorrelated. And we know by definition that their mean vector is mu sub i. So each one of these vectors has its own mean vector mu sub i. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a computation. We're going to start off with this, which is the expected value of the norm squared of a sum of random vectors. The sum is the random vector minus its mean vector over all i. We're going to do this computation and simplify this a little bit. And it turns out that this does simplify a little bit because of the fact that they are mutually uncorrelated. So let's go ahead and do this computation. We can actually rewrite this as this. By definition, the norm squared of a vector quantity is equal to the quantity times its complex conjugate transpose. And that's what we have right here. This little star means complex conjugate transpose, which means take the conjugate and take the transpose. Some books like to use kind of this dagger symbol. Some books use the star symbol but conjugate transpose is what that operation means, and that's what you use in general when working with general random vectors. If you know that you're working with real valued vectors, and xi is a real valued vector, mu i is a real valued vector, then this simply turns into just a normal transpose. So sometimes you'll see this norm squared written as the vector quantity times the vector quantity transpose for the case where you're working with real vectors. So all we've done here in this line is use the definition of norm squared for vectors. And then I'm going to rewrite this just a little bit different here on this line. Instead of using the i index again, all this is is a counter index, so I'm going to call it j to kind of split things up a little bit. And then what I can do is instead of writing it as a sum times a sum, I can write it as a double sum, right? This quantity in here is just a whole bunch of different products of xi minus mu i's times xj minus mu j's. So whether I want to have a big list of xi's times a big list of xj terms, or if I just want to kind of loop over their products as a function of a double sum, it's all one and the same. So it's just a different way of rewriting this double summation. But I like doing it this way better, because now it's more obvious that I can take my expectation inside. We know the expectation operator is a linear operator. So instead of an expectation of a sum of things, I can write it as a sum of expectation operators. So I can bring this in here. And now the question we have to answer is, you know, what is this expected value quantity? Is there any way I can simplify this? So let's work on that term in our double sum for just a minute. So this is the term we're going to work on. And let's go ahead and just assume that i is not equal to j. So i is one index, j is another index, and they're not equal to each other. Let's go ahead and just multiply all this out. I've got two terms in each parentheses termed over here. So once I just do some algebra, I'm going to end up with four terms inside my expectation just by multiplying all these out. And then instead of writing the expectation of a sum of terms, I'm going to write this as a sum of expectations. Again, just using the fact that the expectation operator is linear. So I'll get all of these terms. And now we can use one of the assumptions we were given in the problem, the fact that the vectors are mutually uncorrelated. So when i is not equal to j, we know that this term right here is mutually orthogonal with each other. Actually, I said that wrong at first. Originally, I wrote mutually, un mutually orthogonal, and what I meant to say was mutually uncorrelated. Those are very different things. The assumption of this problem at the start was that they're mutually uncorrelated, so I went ahead and corrected that. Since these are mutually uncorrelated, that lets us simplify this term. Normally, to compute this term, we need the joint density of xi and xj to plug into the equation to do the actual expectation. But since they are mutually uncorrelated, we know that means we can split them up into the expectation of xi times the expectation of xj. And that's a very different computation that we need to do. And it simplifies this quite a bit. So, it's, so we've, we've simplified this based on the fact that these are mutually uncorrelated. And then we can continue simplifying these terms. Mu j star is a constant, so I pulled it out right here. 
on the next term, mu i is a constant, so I pulled it out of the expectation. And then finally, this last term, mu i and mu j are both constants, so the expectation operator just goes away. So now this is pretty easy. The expected value of xi is mu i. The expected value of xj star is mu j star. And then I can just continue doing this. The expectation of xi is mu i. The expectation of xj star is mu j star, etc. So I can just write all these down. And now let's look at this. Two of these terms, these two, mu i, mu j star minus mu i, mu j star, those perfectly cancel. And similarly, these two terms perfectly cancel. So when I'm all said and done for i not equal to j, what I end up with actually is a zero vector. So that's interesting. In this double sum that we're working on, most of the terms, for every term i not equal to j, we actually get zero out. So that simplifies this double sum quite a bit. Instead of a double sum, since most of these terms are zero, the only time I have a non-zero term is when i and j are equal. So this turns into just a single sum when i equals 1 to n, and then the j part has turned into i's. And now we're almost there. This, by definition, on the right here, is just the definition of norm squared again, right? If we have a quantity times its complex conjugate transpose, this vector quantity, by definition, that means that quantity norm squared. So we can go back to using our norm squared definition. And what we've done is we've now shown our starting equation is equal to this end equation. We've showed that the expected value of a norm squared of a sum of vectors is equal to a sum of the expected value of norm squared of vectors for the special case where these vectors are mutually uncorrelated. And that was a key step. This step up here, the mutually uncorrelated part, is what let us simplify this and get to this kind of final nice form where we can move the expectation operator inside. So that was just a simple example, getting some practice doing some vector computations and some covariance computations, things like that, and using the property of uncorrelated random vectors to do the computation.